Welcome to Greg Hansen's Video Notebook brought to you by Hughes Federal Credit Union. I'm Star Sports Editor Ryan Finley here with Greg Hansen. Greg, the Arizona Wildcats are 1-0. They beat NAU 62-24 in last Saturday's opener. I know that you can only read so much from a blowout against a bad team, but what were your first impressions? My first and lasting impression is I wish college football would do something about scheduling. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and make teams play better teams, right. make FBS teams play FBS teams, right. or even Power 5 against Power 5. Mm -hmm. it just I, I thought the fans who showed up there didn't get their money's worth. Right, it, and it's funny. I mean, they were sort of lured to the stadium with the promise of yeah. possible Rob Gronkowski bobblehead, seeing a football team for the first time in nine months, and yet it seemed like by halftime the place had cleared out and there wasn't oh. a lot going on. It was, you know, for someone who's been around to a lot of games there, it's just so dismaying to look across on the east side and see the Zona Zoo empty at halftime. Right. And see the rest of the stands have like 45% capacity. Right. It's just, I mean, play better, play better people. Right. If you play better, and I mean, we've seen this in the recent past, when they played Iowa, the stadium was full. Oh, 57,000. 57,000. When they played even somebody like Oklahoma State, the stadium yeah. was relatively full. Uh, I'm not sure it's a referendum on the football pro on the football team as much as it is on the program when people stay home. I think that people are tired of the program playing bad teams. And look, this is not unique to Arizona. And this is not unique to Arizona football. Arizona's basketball season goes a lot like this sure, too. Yeah. But they're going to win 92% of their games, and so nobody cares. It's, I think sooner or later something's going to have to be done about it because you right. look around the Pac-12, except for UCLA, Everybody played really bad teams. Yep. Really bad teams. Yep. And that's why there were 96,000 empty seats in the Pac-12 last week. That's eight the games. That's, that's the Rose Bowl. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> wow. They, you know, USC had 30,000 empty seats because they played at 1 o'clock and it was 98 degrees at kickoff. Right. Against Western Michigan, who turned out to be a lot better than you thought. Right. Right. And it was a compelling game. It was a compelling but game. But still, it was almost... Unsu insufferable to the people sitting there. Yeah, it, it's tricky. Uh, and it, there's almost a no win. We joke about this sometimes, but there's no winning sometimes, too. Yeah. I mean, if you play at noon, people are going to complain because it's hot. If you oh, play yeah. at 8, people are going to complain that it's late. But there's a sweet spot here that Arizona exploited for 50 years before the Pac-12 networks came along. You kick at 7 o'clock right. on the dot on Saturday. The weather by then is cooling off. People will have had all day to watch football and, shall we say, um, hydrate yeah. in the parking lot. It's a raucous atmosphere because people have been hydrating all day. It's fun. When you play at 8, it's too late. When you play at 4, it's too early. Alas, the Pac-12 Networks had a quadruple header, <laughs> and that ship has sailed, and it's going to be this way forever. Forever. And then you look at this Saturday's games, it's so funny, going down the list of Pac-12 games, half the teams play between 7 and 8 o'clock. There are like six games going between 7 and 8. You know, if you're sitting home watching on TV or at, at a sports bar watching on TV, hey, it's terrific, isn't it? Right. Yes, it's great. But the fan experience has been totally downgraded. To say nothing about those of us who have deadlines. Oh, I know. <laughs> I mean, the earliest you get out of Arizona Stadium mm -hmm. on most game days now is mm -hmm. 1130, right. earliest. Right. I will say this, though. The state of Arizona could be sort of the the epicenter of the Pac-12 this week. You've got two somewhat competitive games. Mm -hmm. uh, ASU hosts San Diego State, Arizona hosts Houston. Both of these teams ironically played each other in last year's Las Vegas Bowl, were probably the surprise teams in the whatever group of five yeah, or, or yeah. whatever it's called. Um, these could be two fairly compelling games. It's a shame that it's being played so late and you know who's gonna watch? Yeah, there's just so many choices now, but that's the way college football has chosen to go. Right. because. It, you know, TV pays the coaching salary, pays for the facility upgrades, mm -hmm. so they'll dictate, and, right. and the fans will have to, right. will have to go. In many ways, there's never been a better time to be a fan, and in many ways, there's never been a worse time to be a fan. Exactly. If you're sitting in front of your 70-inch television at home, life is great. If you're a card-carrying Wildcat Club member and you want to go to the game, not so much. Watching the UCLA game on mm -hmm. Sunday night at mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. just where you just said, right, right. That was why I like college football. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but when you go to the games, right. it's not that fun it's anymore. It's not that fun. You can't go up to the fridge yeah. during a TV timeout when you're at the game. Yeah. Uh, that'll do it for this episode of Greg Hansen's Video Notebook, brought to you by Hughes Federal Credit Union. For Greg Hansen, your commissioner of football, what time does Arizona kick off every week? 6.30. 6.30. I'm Ryan Finley, 7 o'clock. We'll see you next time.